the tunnels that you see behind us, they go on for probably 100 meters in, in various directions. Um, and they'd been blocked up and they were flooding and we, you could get down there, but you couldn't get in. And we suddenly thought, what a waste. This is a, a, a wonderful theatrical stage. Because of course, one of the things you learn when you put on shows all over the world is that you pay good money for darkness and you've got a lot of darkness under here and the tunnels are very moody uh, and atmospheric. And we've had a number of theater companies down here exploring with us how to put on shows and stuff. And we're starting with a very light touch uh, this half term with, with some children's stuff about the, like the, the spookiness, the, thing, the, the, the ghost tours have actually all sold out. It's been really, you know, people like being scared witless, don't they? Uh, the tunnels run the full extent of the building of the museum. It follows it in the L-shaped pattern of the building. Uh, we weren't quite sure which way they, which direction they turned in until we decided to open them up and have a look. Uh, but it turns out they just turn off exactly where the building does and follow the full profile of the building. Well, the part we've always had open to the public was in a good state, as you see it today. Uh, but the part just behind me was actually part of it. The first half was used as a storage yard for a lot of old signage and things like that, which had just been left there. And then there was an old minecart in the way as well, which we've moved out of the way. Uh, after we moved that, there was a barrier there and then nothing passed there, but it was total darkness. So we, we didn't know what to expect when we got there. And we just found a lot of old rubble, which we had to clear out of the way. But of course, it's a part of the proud history of mining uh, and the clay trade here at Charlestown. Um, this is clay, obviously, and it went down into the, the big boats that you would have seen. Well, some of these are actually would have been used for those clay boats. Uh, and before that, it was copper. And one of the extraordinary things living, living here is how little you are aware of the history until you start reading up on it. And you realize you're talking about uh, copper behind us uh, up in Homebush. There was hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions of pounds of profit in the uh, early 1800s. So imagine what that is today. This was big stuff. And Charlestown, of course, was built um, you know, as an artificial harbor, and it's the only working uh, Georgian harbor anywhere in the country. And that's why, as you know, I mean, it's been used for most of the major romantic thrillers and, thrillers and, and romantic bodice rippers from Poldark through to Taboo to Pirates of the Caribbean and all that sort of stuff. So we feel very blessed being here. And opening up the tunnels gives us A, another stage, and B, it gives us more space because um, the museum for many years has been rather passive. It's, it's had a, a static collection of things uh, and it's, it's got a lot of personality because of that. But um, I used to be a wreck diver and I'm interested in marine archaeology. And in the bays around us around here, there's an awful lot of marine archaeology. And we've been talking to a lot of people about making it an active living center for marine archaeology going forward. So I'm really excited. It's like being a kid.